Hello there, welcome to part 1 of my UI tutorials. In this tutorial, we'll be making buttons. You'll be able to create these buttons using a simple script called create button. So let's begin. This is a new and empty project. First of all, I'll go to objects and create one. I'll name it O Manager. I'll open the room to place it there. Now this object will manage creating and removing the UI. But first we need to make the button object, so we'll get back to this later. So for the UI elements, I'll go ahead and make a group called GUI. Inside this group, I'll create an object for the button. Now in the object, I'll add the create event. And inside the create event, I'll add this. Here we are simply initializing some default properties and variables for the button object. These are simply the default width and height of the button. Now this is the text that appears on the button. This variable stores whether the mouse is hovering over the button. So by default, it's at 0. When you hover over the button, it moves smoothly to 1. So using this variable, you can make some nice hover animations. Now this variable stores the script that will be executed when you click on the button. So currently, it's set to minus 1 for no script. Now I'll go to events and add the step event. I'll also go ahead and add the draw GUI event. We'll be using this event for drawing the UI elements. This event draws everything on a separate GUI layer. That layer draws on top of your game. So this way you can draw the UI above your game and the camera will not affect it. So we'll get back to these events later. First we need to make a script to check whether the mouse is hovering over the button. So I'll name it get underscore hover. Inside the script I'll add this. These functions will get the mouse's x and y coordinates on the GUI layer. If you just use mouse x and mouse y, they would get the mouse coordinates inside the room. So if you have a camera, there's gonna be a difference in your room and GUI coordinates. So that's why you wanna use these functions when you're operating on the GUI layer. Now here, I'm returning the result of this function. The function is called point in rectangle and it simply gets whether a point is inside a rectangle. So the point here is the mouse's location and the rectangle is the button's rectangular area. It goes from the x and y to x plus width and y plus height. So the script returns whether the mouse is inside the button's area. Now I'll go back to the button object and open the step event. I'll add this here. This simply gets whether the mouse is hovering over the button using our script. By the way, this variable has an underscore before its name because that's how I name local variables. Now this variable gets whether the mouse has clicked on the button. So this condition checks whether the mouse is hovering and whether the left mouse button is pressed. Now using the lerp function, we are moving our hover variable smoothly to the target hover value. Basically each step, the hover variable will move 10% closer to the target. Now if the user clicked on the button, we want to run the script. So this checks whether the player clicked on the button and whether the script's value is greater than or equal to 0. So this way when you have the script set to minus 1, nothing will happen when you click on the button. But if a script is set, it'll be executed using this function. Now I'll open the draw GUI event where we'll draw the button. So I'll add this here. Here I'm changing the color of the button. The merge color function is similar to the lerp function but it operates on colors. So when hover is 0, the color will be light gray and when it's 1, it'll be white. So for the in-between values, it's going to mix the two colors. Now here, I'm using the draw round rect function to draw a rounded rectangle. And this is the rectangular area of the button and this 0 makes sure that the rectangle is filled and not just an outline. Now we wanna draw the text. So I'll change the color to black. The text will need to be drawn in the center of the button, so I'll change the horizontal alignment to center and the vertical alignment to middle. So I'll draw the text at the center of the button by adding half the width and half the height to the buttons X and Y. Then I'll reset the alignments to their default values and the color as well. Now to test it, I'll open the room and place a button here. And now I'll run the game. The button appears and if I hover over it, the color animates to white. So the button is working. Now back in the room, I'll delete the button instance. Now I'll go to scripts and create a script called create button. So this script will be used to create the buttons. 
So inside it, I'll add this. These are the arguments that are required for the script. They'll show up in the editor when you're passing arguments to the script. So we have the XY position for the button, the width and the height, the text and the script that will be executed when you click on the button. Here I'm storing the arguments into local variables. Now here I'm creating the button using instance create layer. I'm using the instances layer. And I'm storing the ID of that button in this local variable. Then using width, I'm running this code in the button. I'm basically applying all the arguments to the variables in the button. Now you want the script to return the ID of the button in case you want to apply some additional values to it or modify its position. But we won't be using the return value. Now we'll make the script that runs when a button is clicked. So I'll go to scripts and create one named onClick. Inside it, I'll add this. This function prints a message to the output that is here. So when you click on a button, it's going to print button clicked with the text of the button. Now I'll open O Manager. Here I'll add the create event. Inside it, I'll add this. This variable stores whether the menu is open or not. We want to be able to open and close the menu, so that's why we have this variable. Now I'll add the step event and add this here. We want to open and close the menu with the M key. So this condition checks whether that key is pressed. If it is pressed, this will flip the menu open variable. So if it's true, it'll become false and vice versa. Now if the menu was opened, we want to run the user event 0. But if it was closed, we want to run the user event 1. User events are custom events that run whenever you want them to. So in our project, user event 0 will create the UI and user event 1 will remove it. So by using user events like this, you can make your code cleaner and more organized. Now I'll go ahead and add user events 0 and 1. And now I'll open user event 0. For the description, I'll type create UI. Then I'll add this. This is the width and height of the buttons that I'm going to create. Here I'm creating a button at 40 by 40. This is the width and the height, this is the text and this is the script. Make sure you don't include the parentheses with the script. Adding parentheses executes a script. But here we only want to pass the script's ID as an argument. And here I'm creating a couple more buttons. Now I'll open user event 1 and type remove UI in the description. And in the event I'll add this. So it'll simply destroy all the button instances. And now I'll run the game. I'll press M and the menu appears. Now I'll go near the output window. If I click on a button, it's printed in the output. So the onclick script is working. Now I'll close it. I'll open O button and go to its step event. Now here you can apply some additional animations to the button using the lerp function. So I'll add this here. This smoothly moves the button's Y to this target Y value. The target basically subtracts 8 based on the hover status from the starting Y position of the button. So when you hover over the button, it should move up. And now I'll run the game. You can see that now they're also moving up. So this is just one example and you can actually make many kinds of animations using the hover value. So that's it for this tutorial and I hope it helped you. I'll be making more so make sure you subscribe. Meanwhile, check out all of my tutorials in this playlist and I'll see you in the next one. Cuz. Cuz. I got stocks. The biggest you see. I got stocks. The best that have been. I got stocks. And I'm a clean guy.